Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P. Love and I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Uh, today guys, we're going to do just a quick uh, takedown and disassembly of the Glock 43. We're going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit before we take it out to the range. Uh, this Glock 43 is on loan to us from Stan, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Uh, SS Pond and Stan's been a longtime supporter of the channel and uh, this firearm is part of Stan's private collection and he does loan me firearms for the channel. So let's show SS Pond a little bit of support. Contact information is right there on the screen and you guys are all set to go. All right, now if you're familiar with Glock firearms, you know, takedown and disassembly is, it's almost identical all the way across the board. So you might already be familiar with this, but maybe this is your first pistol. Maybe you're borrowing one to take out to the range. Maybe it's just your first time taking it apart. So uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that we do this the right way, get it put back together and get you back out to the range as soon as we can. All right, so first thing we'll do is talk about some of the basic supplies we're gonna use for this cleanup. Now, everybody cleans their firearm differently. Some people don't even clean them at all. Uh, for me, I just like to use just a simple uh, brass brush and a little nylon brush. These are just 9mm caliber, so they work really well on your barrel. Uh, just a soft gun brush. You can get these at uh, you know, Walmart and get them at your firearm store, wherever you like to go, sporting goods store. Uh, you can also use some older toothbrushes or new soft bristle toothbrushes. Uh, just a little uh, cleaning rod here with a patch on it. Now, you can either use just cut-up cotton t-shirts or you can use these pre-cut patches for the gun videos. I like to use the pre-cut patches, otherwise I just use old cotton t-shirts. Uh, lubricant cleaner of choice is just going to be some Safari Land Break Free CLP. You know, some guys like to use frog lube and do that whole process. Other guys like to use rem oil or any of the other products that are out there. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you do actually clean your gun. Okay, that's probably the most important thing in my opinion. Uh, we've also got some cotton swabs that we're going to use, Q-tips, whatever you want to call them. Now to clean the barrel, you know, you can use a traditional cleaning rod with a uh, br bristle brush that you run through it and then just the mop that you take through it and some patches. Uh, me, I just like to use this Hoppies 9mm 380, 357 uh, bore snake and these work really well. Typically all you have to do is just put a little bit of oil on the front of it and a little bit at the end of it. Run through the barrel a couple times and it's going to be all set to go. As for me, I like to do just a little bit more of a deep clean um, on my pistols before I clean them up. And uh, otherwise, that's about it. Now, if you see my cleaning videos, you know that I'm a big fan of Black Rifle Coffee Company. I usually have a cup of coffee in all my cleaning videos. I've had a lot of coffee today, guys. We had family over this weekend, and I just don't think I need another cup. If I do, it would be enough to kill a small woodland creature. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and eject the magazine. We'll just do a quick clean off of the mag to make sure there's no debris on it, no carbon fouling, etc. Go ahead and check the uh, the bore, the chamber. We're empty. Okay, all good to go there. Now, in order to disassemble the Glocks, now notice that does set the trigger up to fire. Okay, so that's why you always want to double check and make sure there's nothing in the barrel. Uh, disassembly, pretty simple. All you have to do is just grip it, pull back. I like to put my I like to put my thumb behind the back strap here and just pull back a little ways. Pull down on these little takedown handles, or these two little takedown buttons up in the front. And then just go ahead and pull the trigger. Slide comes right off. And you are good to go. So let's clear this out a little bit and we will focus on the slide, the barrel, and those components. All right, so disassembly of the slide, very, very simple. You do have a captive guide rod spring combo right here. We'll go ahead and just take that out and just set that off to the side. When you put it back in, just something to remember is you want to make sure that you've got the little plastic end going towards the front. Or if you have a metal guide rod, you want that little blunt end towards the front. This little thinner part towards the rear is going to sit flat as you put it back in the barrel. You have to be careful and don't ever forget to not put this back in because when you reassemble the gun, it can cause the barrel to lock up on the slide. That can cause some problems. So we'll set that off to the side for now. Uh, go ahead and take your barrel out. Again, the 43, very, very easy to take apart. No problems whatsoever. What I like to do, and you don't have to do this, but I'd, I'd like to put a little bit of uh, CLP down the barrel and just let that marinate for a while. Just kind of let that go. Give it a chance to kind of soak in for a few minutes while we do some other work on the gun. Uh, I also like to just take some, some patches that have some CLP on them and just go ahead and wipe out the inside of the slide. Now, I don't think this gun's going to be too dirty. Uh, I had actually taken it to the range for a video that I did a year ago, but I shot it so poorly that I decided not to actually film the video. I mean, I was not <laughs> putting paper on target the way I wanted to, and I don't know if it was just a bad day at the range. Um, I'm not sure if uh, it was just poor shooting or if it was ammo or what the deal was but i've since taken a lot of well quite a few um, handguns uh, defensive pistol courses and i practiced quite a bit at the range and i like to feel like i'm a lot more capable with this pistol so i wanted to give it one more chance so i asked stan at the pawn shop i said hey can i borrow this you know one more time take it out and just see how it goes and stan said sure take it on out so we're going to take it out this week uh weather pending and, and go from there all right so again just a little wipe out just make sure you wipe everything off uh, you may want to take a soft bristle brush and just kind of brush them behind the extractor right here. 
uh, just in case you happen to have some buildup. That can start to build up after a couple hundred rounds. You really start to get some powder there. Not that it's necessarily going to cause an issue, but it's nice to have a nice clean firearm when you go out to the range, in my opinion. Again, you want to make sure you don't get any lubricant down there in that striker channel. Now, I'm not going to show you how to take that apart. You can watch other videos on YouTube. I'm just showing you how just to do a basic, you know, field disassembly and cleaning and so on. Now, something I do like to do is take and put a little bit of uh, CLP on a Q-tip here. And then just go ahead and run it in the tracks. Now, the thing is, guys, we're going to go through this whole gun. And we're going to just wipe it all out with a dry patch just to get any excess oil uh, picked up. Because in these videos, a lot of guys will watch the video and like, man, you just left that thing like super oily and I don't I always mention the videos okay go over with the dry patch and make sure you don't have any extra residue sitting there but people seem to think that I just uh, get these things soaked and then just put them back together and run them and I don't so that's just me kind of letting you guys know all right go and take yourself a dry patch and just go ahead and wipe out any excess you've already got a little bit of lubricant on there now honestly the first time I, I clean the gun I take the gun apart and clean it I do let it soak for a while in CLP just so it kind of gets in the metal and just it makes it easier to clean the next time. But then after that, you're going to find that you can use a little bit less and less oil every time you clean and lubricate. Just because the gun's already been cleaned and, cleaned and lubricated so many times, you start to get a little bit of a non-stick finish. So just something to kind of remember, important to remember, but a lot dirtier than I remember. But anyway, okay, we got that all taken care of. Looks nice. So you just have a real thin glaze of oil going on inside the slide. Nothing too crazy. The, uh, the tracks are nice and clean that the rails are going to run through, or your rails and tracks, whatever you want to call it. Those are nice and clean. Good to go. Okay, now we'll go ahead and take another uh, CLP soaked patch and just go ahead and uh, clean off the barrel, the outside. Uh, you also may want to take your cleaning brush again and just go ahead and scrub around the top, the, free, the feeding ramp. You know, you're, you're going to start to get a buildup towards the top here where the uh, barrel locks into the slide. And you know, sometimes need to get your fingernail in there to get that carbon out of there. Now, I think there's a chance that this, is, this gun has been fired since I cleaned it last year. In fact, I'm pretty sure it has been, which is why it's a little bit dirty. Make sure you kind of floss underneath there, getting that little lug right there too. So that gets nice and clean. Just run through it a couple times. Make sure your feed ramp is nice and clean. Now, there's already lubricant in the barrel, so I'm not going to put any lubricant on the bore snake. I'm just going to go ahead and run this through twice and see how it looks. So let's just go ahead and pull that through. These are nice because they save you a lot of time. Uh, my opinion, they're just, I don't know if you necessarily save a lot of money because you pay anywhere between $10 to $15 for these if you buy them at, say, uh, your local sporting goods store or Walmart, etc. But you run through a couple times and it's good to go. I still like to do a good uh, scrub brush on all my guns, like a nice clean of the barrels, especially the ones that I shoot a lot. It's kind of nice to do that once a year just to make sure they get nice and clean. But for just general maintenance, just general use, you're basically good to go. Here, let's show you. See that? Nice and shiny. You can see your rifling in there. See, no problems. All set. So that's just a couple passes through and it's all set. Uh, go ahead and take a dry patch, wipe off any excess. Again, Glocks do not require a lot of lubricant to run properly. There's probably some guys that have very minimal amount of lubricant that they run on these things to get them to function the way that they need to. So go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, cleaning rod. We'll take our last CLP soaked patch and just go ahead and wipe it off. This is, again, we're just wiping off any excess burn powder or residue that could be here from the last range strip that this uh, pistol has taken, has had. Okay, no problems there. Got that all taken care of. All right, let's go ahead and uh, reassemble. Again, it really is that simple. You know, sometimes you might want to take your soft brush, if I haven't told you yet, and just go ahead and clean the front area where your firing pin comes out right here. Just make sure that that's all set. Just kind of run through a couple times. But otherwise, very little maintenance is required to get these guns uh, back to range ready condition I guess you could say. Go put your barrel in, make sure that it's nice and flat, make sure it's not at an angle like this. Make sure it's not, you know, it's not sitting out, just nice and flat, should be good to go. Go and take your uh, guide rod spring combo and put that in there. And again, it should be, it should be flat. It should look just like this when you reassemble it. Okay, if it doesn't, you've got some problems. If it's up, if it's sitting up like this, you wanna, you definitely wanna be careful. Make sure that it's locked into that little channel that's underneath the uh, lug of the barrel so it stays where it needs to stay, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get busy working on that lower. Now on these lowers, on the lower frame, or your frame I guess you could say, uh, for this I just like to take just a, a damp patch and just kind of run over it a little bit. You can go over it with a brush if you notice a lot of residue or buildup. This one's not, not too bad. Uh, you may also want to possibly use uh, rem oil on the lower frame to clean it. Sometimes that's not a bad idea. But I just generally go through it, just kind of wipe it off a little bit. Go through with the Q-tip if you want to. We'll just go ahead and put a little bit of uh, CLP on a Q-tip and just kind of 
clean things out a little bit around the trigger, around your slide release and so on. Just kind of wipe some stuff out. Really not a big deal. Kind of wipe off the front of the dust cover area underneath here. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and put just a little bit of CLP on our cotton swab here and just go ahead and run that through the tracks right here, your rails. There we go. You want a little bit of lubricant there. Since those are your main friction points on the firearm, you always want to make sure that you have something on there. A little bit on that trigger bar also. Just kind of just, just general kind of coat everything a little bit and you're going to be fine. Again, this is just a real simple cleaning. It's nothing too crazy. You can get into as much detail and spend as much time on this as you want to. But uh, for viewer's sake, I try to keep it as simple as I can. Uh, the magazine itself, just make sure that you have just a little dab of CLP here. You want to make sure that you just, you don't want to leave a lot on the magazine. The last thing you want to do is get that on your firearm. But you can go ahead and just wipe down your mag. And sometimes you have some uh, powder residue on these also. Okay, you got that. And then just go ahead and hit that with the dry patch real quick. There you go. Let's go ahead and wipe it off. Because you do not want oil getting on your primers because that can cause your firearm, your ammunition to malfunction, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and just set that off to the side. Uh, the last thing I like to do is to go ahead and put a little bit of CLP on a patch here. Okay, just get a little in there. Again, we've gone through and dried everything off. We don't have a lot of excess lubrication going on. Put that in the magazine well and just go ahead and scrub it out. And you'll be surprised what can build up in these magazine wells as time goes on, especially if you fire a lot and don't clean your guns that often. I've had some guns that come out that are just absolutely filthy. This one looks pretty good. Just kind of make sure that it's nice and clean. Okay, there's really nothing on there. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and just run a dry patch of that magazine well. And guys, when we come back, we will go ahead and show you the uh, reassembly procedure as it is very simple. So just go ahead and run a dry patch in the magazine well, and you're going to be good to go from there. Now the uh, last thing I want to say before we reassemble is we ended up not using these cleaning brushes and this is kind of an example of what some people would use say, if they have a traditional uh, rod and a handle with a cleaning brush on it. You can use these. The brush wasn't too bad. If I have a really fouled over brush I might use this first to break things up with a little bit of CLP down the barrel uh, before I follow up with a bore snake. So you can always kind of keep those around in case you need them. Again, make sure you've got your guide rod uh, flat. Your spring is mounted flat in the slide. And just go ahead and put the slide back on the tracks. Hmm. Kind of doing this the opposite hand of how I normally do it. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and put it on. Pull back. Okay, put your locks into place. Good to go. Make sure that, that your uh, slide stop is going to work. Okay, go and release. Now you can check. We're empty. Go ahead and dry fire. Check your reset. Okay, good to go there. Okay, now let's go ahead and make sure that your last round hold open is going to work. Okay, perfectly functional. Good to go. Go ahead and top charge release. There you go. And dry fire. And you are good to go. So that, in essence, is all it takes to clean off your Glock 43. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe off any excess oil that's left on the slide here. Uh, I'm just going to make sure it just has a nice, real thin coat. You want to make sure it's not oily at all. And you should be all set. So there you go, guys. That is the basics of cleaning most of your Glock firearms. I'm sure there might be a few others that are a little bit different when it comes to disassembly, but that's basically what the process consists of. So guys, if you like what you see, please like or subscribe. We're going to be coming out with the range test of this uh, G43 pretty soon. Uh, have not made it yet. There's a chance that'll be up before the cleaning video. And then after that, we'll do a little tabletop review. But otherwise, guys, uh, please like or subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also over on GunChannels.com with my Saturday morning podcast called Caliber Corner. You can always check that out. Otherwise, got a huge back catalog of videos that you can check out. And uh, we'll keep bringing you lots of content. Oh, last thing, if you like what you see, you can support me over on Patreon with uh, Patreon.com backslash TravisP11. But in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, we'll take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.